Good morning. <clears throat> this is day two of our service entitled, Who Will Be Caught Up? This is part two. Please subscribe so you can follow through every day. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. This passage I just quoted is describing the parousia, the same Greek term used in Matthew chapter 24. It is not a secret coming. It is the appearing of Christ in the historic day of the Lord. Who will be caught up? Or paraphrasing it, who will participate in the first resurrection? Only the victorious one, okay, the conquerors. It reminds us of the David's mighty men. It is not a general resurrection of all Israel, we might say. Let us now examine what God's Word says about the first resurrection. The resurrection and the catching up, which they call rapture, that will occur when Jesus next appears. In Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6, I would like to uh, quote this for you, okay? So I saw thrones on which we which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And take note, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6. It says, I saw thrones. This tells us the whole story, doesn't it? The first resurrection, that which will take place when the Lord Jesus appears, is not a resurrection to life in a mansion in heaven, but to rulership. These are God's kings, a first fruits of the royal priesthood. Then I look in Revelation 14:1, and there before me was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I know it is difficult for us to understand that God chooses people for wrongs in his kingdom, for specific roles to play, but that is just the way it is. We will prefer that everyone will be equal. If we are wise, we will follow Christ carefully so that we may grasp that for which we personally have been grasped and not seek to go beyond that. I saw thrones on which were seated those who have been given authority to judge. No, I do not believe the average churchgoer in America and in, in all nations today is capable of judging the world and angels. So we see that the task and roles appointed to those who would participate in the first resurrection eliminate all but the most faithful candidates. And I saw the souls of those who have been who had been beheaded, okay, because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. This may include physical decapitation. However, one of the most important qualifications of Christ's witnesses of the closing days of the church age is they have set aside their own life, their own planning and thinking in favor of living by Christ, planning and thinking. Maybe this is what is meant by beheaded. The idea of living by the life of the Lord Jesus Christ instead of our own Adamic life is so utterly important that I scarcely could overemphasize it. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not, had not received its mark 
on their foreheads or their heads. We who live in America today are worshiping Antichrist to a certain extent in that the chief goal of many of us is to acquire money. Money is the power of Antichrist just as the Spirit of God is the power of Christ. Christ commanded us to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. To place acquiring money as our chief concern is to have the mark of Antichrist on our forehead or right hand. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the first resurrection, the resurrection of the first fruits of the royal priesthood. They are not the average lukewarm believer. They are filled with the iron righteousness by which they govern, with fiery holiness, with stern obedience to God. It says, And the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. So the purpose of the thousand year kingdom age or millennium, as I understand it, is to provide time for the majority of God's elect to grow to spiritual maturity. I believe they will be assisted by the stronger saints who attain to the first resurrection in keeping with the Bible injunction that the stronger should assist the weaker. This may mean that in addition to their duties as kings over the earth, some of the victorious saints might be assigned to God's elect who are waiting in the spiritual Mount Zion to prepare them for their role as members of the royal priesthood. When the heavenly Jerusalem descends to the new earth, this is the first resurrection. As I stated previously, the second resurrection will occur, okay, will occur at the termination of the thousand year kingdom age. At that time, everyone will be resurrected who was not qualified to be resurrected in the first resurrection. It says, Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. Have you noticed that no books were opened? This is because the participants in the first resurrections were judged beforehand. Okay? Participating in the first resurrection is their sentence. Perhaps the Spirit of God is pointing out the sins you are committing as a Christian. If this is happening to you, you are appearing at the judgment seat of Christ. You are to confess the sin pointed out to you and to turn away from it with all the strength you have and the strength the Lord Jesus gives to you. Those who are ready to be caught up to Christ in the first resurrection will have successfully turned away from their sins before the Lord appears. This is why no books are open, okay? Their judgment has been completed. The second death has no power over them. The Father has given the lake of fire authority over eight kinds of behavior, okay? And these are the eight kinds of behavior. It says in, in Revelation, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, Revelation 21 verse 8. The lake of fires maintains authority over these eight behaviors whether or not we profess to believe in Christ. The only way we can escape from the power of the lake of fire is by gaining through Christ victory over these practices. Once we gain victory over each of them, the lake of fire cannot harm us. Can you see from this the qualify of, of the people who are qualified to be raised in the first resurrection. Can you say it? But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. So we understand that it will be the first fruits of the royal priesthood who will participate in the resurrection and the catching up when Jesus appears. 
not the casual believer who is comfortable in the Antichrist system of buying and selling. I say first fruits of the royal priesthood because the majority of those whom God has called to the priesthood, the Christian church, are not prepared, I believe, to participate in the first resurrection. They will have to wait in the heavenly Zion, in the spirit world, until they are ready to fulfill their roles in the new world of righteousness, until they are ready to be part of the new Jerusalem when it descends to the earth. If you are not resurrected and caught up to meet Christ in the air, when He appears, I hope not, you will remain on the earth to be with Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. This will not be driven from the earth until Christ appears with His army of saints and angels. The question arises, what will those who are called up be doing between the catching up and the time they return with Christ. Remember, they are not called up to heaven but to the air, okay, where Christ and the army of angels are waiting. As soon as the victorious saints are caught up to the staging area in the air, which they call the second heaven, they will have to be organized into an army. The place of each saint in the army will have to be established. They will have to be given a white war stallion and mounted on it. They will have to know who their officers are. Throughout their lives, they have been sternly obedient to Christ, so they will need only a short reminder of the importance of obeying their officers promptly. The saints will be introduced to the army of angels, so they will be aware of their situation relative to the angelic army. I have heard that events on the earth move more slowly than those in the spirit world. So what may seem to those caught up to be a brief orientation period may be a longer time on the earth. However, since the vials of wrath are being poured out during this period, okay, it probably will be a relatively short time, lest there be no people left for Christ and his saints to govern. The vials of divine wrath will be poured out on the earth as soon as the saints are caught up to Christ. Take note of that. The vials of divine wrath will be poured will be poured on the earth as soon as the saints are caught up to Christ to prepare the world for His coming with His saints and angels. So each of us will do well to learn to live by the life of the Lord Jesus in order that we may be ready to be with Him when He next appears. When we think of the multitude of Christian people, who are hoping for a rapture that will place them in a mansion in heaven, we realize the importance of warning God's people that they are entertaining a false hope. If we, if we desire to attain to the first resurrection, we need to prepare ourselves now by living a righteous holy life through God's Spirit. Many American people including Christians, are living in the Antichrist world system without realizing it. Mom and dad are happily reviewing their retirement plans. The children are engrossed in their electronic games and the television, diligently absorbing the values of Satan. Time to go to bed, kids! While mom and dad watch the late night shows in which the comedian make fun of Christ and our moral values. All this while, we may be in danger of attack from more disciplined nation. Such is the American culture in the present hour. Because of this, severe pain is to come upon our nation. This is not because God does not love us. It is because He does love us and does not desire that we continue in the bondages of Satan. We are worshiping material wealth and comforts 
we are spreading this God to the rest of the world through our television programs. And we are looking for a rapture that will bring such self-centered, pleasure-loving people to mansions in heaven because they have accepted Christ. Women received back their dead and raised to life. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Hebrews 11:35. Did you hear that? So let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and His bride and His, his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Revelation 19 verses 7 and 8. His bride has made herself ready. This again is referring to the first resurrection. Perhaps some of God's elect will say to themselves, I will wait in the heavenly Jerusalem until I am prepared to descend to the new earth. I don't have to prepare myself to join in the first resurrection. Wow. This is to play games with God. And God always wins. He will see the deceit in your heart. He will see that. And you will lose your crown. You will be treated as hidden and stand in your place at the second resurrection where you will be judged according to your works. It says, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. The death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person were judged according to what they had done. Revelation 20 verses 12 and 13. I hope the Word of God spoke to you this morning. May we have that fear in our hearts. A holy fear that will follow the Lord all the way. We thank you, Father, for your Word. Bless your saints, Lord, your people who are pursuing, Lord, what you have apprehended for them. Bless them, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. See you, saints, and God bless.